Welcome to a video about the new MBS Sojo plugins version 21.1, the latest plugin just released a few days ago, and I want to show you a few of the new examples coming with the plugin. So you downloaded our plugin, you got the disk image or the zip archive, and now we like to show you the data detector example. So we copy the example to the desktop so we can edit it. Drop it on Sojo. And here's the example project. Let's run it. Let's analyze the text and you see we have a text here. We analyze the text, we find phone numbers, we find dates, URLs, we find some address information, we find airline information, we got another address here, a phone number, and we got an email address here. Now you may ask, how do you do that? Well, we use the is it the check method? Yeah, and the check method uses the NS data detector class that's provided by Apple's frameworks on macOS and iOS and allows you to do the same magic that the Apple Mail application or the Fari does to find variable information within all your texts on the user interface. So we can analyze a text, we take it from the text area and we get all the matches and then we loop through the matches here and we find address information and then we color the address in red. We color date, time, durations in green, links in blue, phone numbers in purple and transit information in brown. And we show in the list box all the details like an address block may come with a street, a zip code, a country, and um, date information may have a time in time on the day, a date, and maybe a duration like the event is over several days. And you can get a link. Link may include an email address and phone number may have a phone number in different formats. If you need formatting for phone numbers, we do have a separate example for that using JavaScript engine. So analyze and here you see we are closed from 1st to 5th April. And if you scroll down, you see we got a duration so this is several days and you get the duration in seconds here. Okay, play with the example and we go here to the next one. Let me close this. Next example I want to show you is NS collection test, which is not in this folder, but in the controls folder. So open it, launch it, and it shows us it created a hundred boxes. We can scroll, we can move up and down, we can resize the window. Wonderful. We can click on an item and it makes the label bold. And now let's just add a little thing to this example. We use a container here, so every every item is a container, and this has an uh, image well and a label. So let's add a delete button, so we can show you the animation, because you can animate things here. So let's take here a delete button to remove an item. Action event. So I got a little bit code here from our documentation on how to remove an item, please. 
So we need the index, but once we have the index, we can remove the item at the index and then um, create an index path and tell the main window collection view animator to delete the items and then it will be animated. We need an index, so let's add the missing index here. Index property and when we create one, let's say here, we put the index in the property that's index pass dot item we got a little problem and as you no member delete items let's see uh, so animator is an NS collection for NS well okay so your compiler got a little bit confused with an overloaded property. So let's say we take the animator, it's an NS view. We make our control view as NS collection view and cast it. No, I, I don't look. Okay. Let's make it a variant put the variant in this and then we can call it I think so let's run yeah so we got a lot of nice things and I can click here on element 5 and oops you see they all are moving very nice so if you need a crit control on macOS you can use this control in the plugin and use all the nice features Apple provides and those are the same features as you see in the photos application or the finder for showing a list of items. Let's take a look at another example. I got a nice example here called leak finder which may help you to debug your applications. Let's show you for a moment. This is an example where we made a class to look for leaks in our projects. And let me show you where we create a leak. So we have some code here. We make a dictionary, we make a variant, array. In the array we put a pair and this pair references the dictionary. Oh, the dictionary is now in the array. We make a new pair, we stuff the array in the pair. And oh my god, we make a circular reference here by putting the pair in the dictionary. So the dictionary reference is a pair, the pair, the array, the array, the dictionary, and this way, well, so you can't release the memory, we have a memory leak. We may also have a database connection with a record set, we may have other things, and then we call the find leaks method, and it will use our leak finder and Reported leaks go to the found leak method, which then shows them with the pass in a list box. So let's just run this. Okay, looks like we have a little bug here. For some reason, we have a variant. Okay, let's fix this variant. If variant is a leak object, then so again, let's run it. 
and we got the list of objects. So we have the pair, reference the dictionary, a pair, an array, a pair again. Also found here, 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 this is all the same leak. The text files reference the list box, okay. Push button, reference the windows and back the push, push button. Yeah, that's something we added here. So the push button has a set win method which uh, gets the window reference, puts it in a non-weak property, so, well, that's a circular reference. So, how does this work? Well, we have a constructor, okay, creates an object. We have our find leaks method, which adds all objects by looping over the runtime model to get all the objects. Then we process the objects which basically means we go over the objects, look for child objects, especially here for our window, list box, row sets, dictionary, we have special code for some container classes. And for all generic classes, we look with introspection for properties. And if we got uh, properties, we, we get the value and if the value is not a special case to ignore, we add a reference. Adding a reference means that we know now that one particular object references another object. It takes some time to get all the references from all objects to all the others, but once we have that, we can then loop and walk all the edges in our object graph and look for the leaks, and if we found one, we can report it either here, like just print it to the console or reported via the event. I hope this example may help you to find a few memory leaks in your applications. For example, you can just add a, a window like this uh, into your project and then have a button to show it, run the, run the check and list the items. And the found leak method is really important here because you can now here maybe add some additional code and then decide to break and actually inspect which object you got. So you can identify which of the many dictionaries it may be that is leaked by looking on the content. So this was the leaks project. Now let's show you we got our big number and that's really a huge class for holding number numbers. So Tim B as big number MBS is big number MBS. So we have a random number function. We can simply break. And in the debugger, we can now inspect the number. And this is really a huge number. Like here, plus. This number has billions of digits. And the range uh, for big number is already big with 320 bit of length. It's five times bigger than a normal double. Can hold magnitudes of more numbers, but people doing scientific calculations have even bigger needs. So for, for them we created bigger number. And bigger number has two and a half thousand not the same name, of course, has an uh, even bigger range with two and a half thousand bits. So here you can create numbers which are far exceeding anything we can imagine. But beside the number of exponent, uh, the exponent range, the important thing for the scientific people is the number of digits after the decimal separator. 
and we have seen here precision of over 600 digits. And this is a floating point, it's still quite fast, because it can use all the mass like, like you would expect for a normal double, just with a double of a much bigger size. So we have all our, our usual functions, we have here cosinus, sinus, logarithmic functions, we can calculate your pi or we can get the root of numbers. So you can do a lot of math here and we have the operators so you can use the normal plus, minus, multiply, sojo. And if needed you can get a string value back. Yeah, if you have a need for big numbers, please try it. And now I want to finally show you something for iOS. So let's make a little iOS project, just save. Let's put a button there and we want to export a picture. We got our iOS picture module and there we got white image to save photo album. Oh, we may need a picture, so let's get a picture. Logo MBS is my little utility to get an MBS logo wherever I need one in an example. So we export a picture, okay, pick. So there is a delegate, we could just pass near to have no delegate, or let's say we have address of export done. And now we need an export done method. So copy, add, method, export done, we get an error as NS error, and let's just display it, so if E is not nil, then we got an error, message box E localized description, otherwise Looks like looks like the export worked. Done. Save the project. Run the project. And let's see if we get it to work or not. Takes a while to boot, okay, export, and oh, it's gone. Where is it? What happened? Console. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is a console for iOS. Oh, all messages, okay. Let's run again. So it's running. Clear, press, and where is my logging message? A lot of messages. Um, well, it's named test, so let's see. This app, oh here, this app crashed because it attempted to access private, privacy sensitive data without a user's description. Okay, this will happen all the time if you do stuff on iOS. You may miss something. So NS photo library at usage description is needed to export a picture. You're not importing a picture, you're not seeing any pictures, but well, so uh, we need uh, Xcode with, with Xcode, uh, Xcode, we create a new file, a lot of choices, uh, property, there it is. So new property list on the desktop, info.plist, 
Let's create a new entry here. I click plus, okay. So, and I write here something like for export only. Don't want to scare the user. Put a nice string there. So, we have our info P list. We drag it in the app. Soldier will automatically include it in the build. And now I run this. And let's see what happens. I click export and oh, would like to add to your photos. Okay, yeah, okay. Export done. How nice. Now see if we can find it. Uh, photos. Yeah. So you see. Uh, yeah. So I exported it twice because, well, I tested this example earlier for you. So another example. Let me show you our new classes for NSNet service. I'll just copy them to the desktop. We have a desktop version, an iOS version, and of course also a console version with which may even work in the web edition. So for this test, let's comment out this. So we have a test service and we have the iOS project 2. And the iOS project also can watch for different services. So let's say here, we disable that. So we only search for test. Let's run the example. And this may be your desktop app. We advertise our test service. And, well, we did publish it and then we found it. And on iOS, you can then go Let's put it so your iOS device in the same network can find your service and connect to it with a normal TCP socket. That's a great way to have your iPhone app automatically find your desktop app and talk to each other. So, well, enjoy. And if you have any questions about our plugins, Please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching and see you all on the next Sojo conference.